Now, I have a history of brow offences. When I was 12 years old, my friend Jenny pinned me down and plucked mine to within an inch of their life because apparently they were an embarrassment and I wasn't going to the disco with her like that. However, now brows are a huge deal. Everybody talks about the power brow and how Cara Delevingne has the best in the business, but for me, it has to be Emma Watson. Hers are so sleek, so straight and so bold and also they look really natural because you can even see the individual hairs and that's what I think looks really cool. So whenever I'm doing mine, I'm always channeling Emma Watson. A more flattened arch looks really cool and gives a strong androgynous look. You only have to look to someone like Victoria Beckham who absolutely nails this. When she was in the Spice Girls, she used to do these crazy, almost Disney villain arches but now she's a fashion icon, she goes for a thick, straight, sleek brow and that looks way better. When you're choosing your brow product, the best thing to do is to go for something that looks really natural. And if you're a dark blonde like me, that means something with a greyish tone. Now that might seem a little bit crazy, but I actually knew a makeup artist once who told me that her mum used to use a 4B pencil to do her eyebrows because that colour was the closest to her natural blonde. Anything too red will look a little bit fake, so stick to that cooler colour. However, if you're not going to use a 4B pencil, the best thing to do is to take the hair, take your hair up and look at the nape of your neck and that darker colour there is actually the closest colour to your brows. It'll usually be about one to two shades darker than the hair on top of your head, but that's a good marker to go with. There are so many brow products out there and somehow I seem to own them all. Um, here are a few of my favourite products. First of all, brow mascara. This used to really scare me, but I promise it's not scary at all. This one from Maybelline is actually really good because if you have a look at the bristles, they're really sparse and really long and really delicate as well. So you can actually just give your brows a little bit more bulk, a little bit more definition without looking too fake. Second, Kiko do a really good brow marker pen. Again, not something to be scared of. What it actually is, is a felt tip, but it's really super duper fine. So you can draw on individual hairs. So if you've over plucked and have a bit of a bold patch, this can fill it in without actually having to scribble. Now this Tom Ford Brow Sculptor is a great product for summer because it's a powder-based formula. And you might think, why does that matter? But any wax-based formula has a tendency to slip and slide and you can wipe your brows straight off. But if you suffer from oily skin or maybe it's hot, this is great because it won't go anywhere, it'll stay exactly where you put it. But the one I'm going to be using today is a Sisley pencil. Um, it's got a really good fine tipped pencil to it, so I can draw on individual hairs, but I can also do a little bit of shading and sculpting. It also has a great brush on the end. It's really sturdy and gets your brows into the right place so you can draw a good line. I always start by giving my brows a bit of a brush so they're in some sort of orderly fashion. Um, so I just take the end like this and just sweep them upwards and outwards like that. And the other one upwards and outwards. Now, an old makeup artist trick is to use the pencil to measure where your brows should be. So you start off by holding the pencil vertically next to your nose and seeing where the point lies. So my brow naturally does start about there, but if yours doesn't, that's a good guideline as to where it should. Next, you hold the pencil next to your nose and work out where the outside should be. So hold it next to your nose and point it to the top of your ears and you can see where it should end. Now you can probably see that my eyebrows end a little bit short of that so I'm gonna fill that bit in. And the last measurement is that the, the peak or the highest arch of your brow should be in line with the outside of your iris which is the coloured part. So look where your colour is in your eye and then just measure up from that and that's where your arch should be. So I'm about right there and I'm about right there, I just need to draw a little bit longer there. So first off, I start by filling in vertically the inner corners. Now, because I like the Emma Watson look, I like to draw individual hairs here. I think it looks less blocky and more natural. So 
I'll start with a couple of little sweeping motions like that and then I'll go underneath and fill out from the bottom all the way up to the peak there. If I'm feeling brave, I'll do a little bit on the top, but again, I don't want it to be too much of a structured look. So I'll mainly concentrate on the bottom up to the arch. Now, as I said, my brows are a little bit lacking towards the end. So when I work down from the peak in little hair motions, I tend to make it just a little bit longer. I'm not trying to make it look fake or make it look like they go all the way down, but in that measurement, that's a little bit closer. I'll do a little bit more. Everything's done in very small, sort of swishing motions rather than a big, full one. And they're a little bit sparse there, so I'll fill that in. And then generally I sort of sit back and have a look and you can tell now the difference between one brow and the other, but that in general looks a bit more structured and sleeker. So there you have it, more defined, a bit sleeker, and very nearly Emma Watson.